Hi, I'm Bobby McCumber and welcome to VU Open Day. I've got a panel joining me now. We're going to talk all things business. First up, we've got Michael Natalianis. Michael is a senior lecturer in finance at Victoria University's Business School. So welcome, Michael. Thank you. Next up, we've got Chris Skevafilakis. Now, Chris is one of our resident future students advisors and a VU business graduate. Thank you for joining us, Chris. No problem. Skevo, as your mates call you, is yep. that all right? All Either scared. or. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we've got Samantha Tate with us as well. She's a VU student ambassador and she's going to be talking to us about the VU block model. Thank Thanks you for joining me. us, Samantha. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, Chris, we'll start with you. Um, as our resident future student advisor, what advice do you give to undergrad and postgrad students interested in studying business? Good question. Um, so I might have to break it down into two for undergrad and postgrad okay. separately because um, most undergrad students, I guess, will be you know, 17, 18, 19 years old. And what I have to say from the get-go is you're not always going to get it right from the start. So keep your options open. Business is a fantastic field to get into. Get into. There's over 12 specialisations. You can choose anything and everything. And the best thing about it too is if you love what you do or you're not specifically um, so into your field, you can also follow it into a postgrad field and do something in, in the postgrad space, like say marketing and then go into analytics in, in postgrad. So keep your options open. There's plenty of things you can choose from and it's countless because it, it's an amazing field to get into, to be honest. So yeah, I guess we'll start off with that. Beautiful. Um, Chris, oh sorry, we've just had Skevo. Uh, Michael, I'll go across to you now. One of your specialisations is finance. Um, can you describe what studying finance at VU looks like? Well, it's, it's an array of, uh, of areas that, you, um, that you're going to experience. Um, but it, th there's a select number of areas that can prepare students for a number of different uh, uh, careers. Um, whether it's uh, working for um, banks or whether you're um, even working in funds management or, um, or simply for a corporation in their finance divisions. But you do get a, 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 an array of different types of um, uh, units, which uh, represents uh, a number of different areas in finance. What would you say are some of the most popular jobs that people have after studying in finance? Like you mentioned banks and... and banks, banks would be uh, a big one. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it is quite varying from, from uh, corporate uh, roles, um, even uh, in fund management and even some of the big uh, accounting firms where they go in as, as uh, cons uh, well, take on roles in those big firms, whether they're consultancy roles, etc. So yeah. they, they are varied and they can be government roles as well. So... It'd be quite broad, wouldn't it? Because I oh, guess every department needs a finance department. Absolutely. Yeah. So in uh, everywhere you've got a business or even a government body, you're going to require um, um, people that specialise in that particular area. That's Financial nice. planning, sorry, was another one as well, which yeah. is, I, did, I want to put that in because that's quite a big area and one that's getting more regulated. Um, so the opportunities are, are sort of um, are, are quite good in that particular area. I guess if you've got students that are um, keen footy fans or anything like that, they could perhaps look at some of the AFL clubs to work in their finance department. We're partnered with the uh, Western Bulldogs as well, so there's many opportunities there for the students. I would love to take that role on, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but yes, uh, yes, uh, sports has become so professional yeah. that, uh, yeah, even within... Oh, well, we've had a number of, actually, uh, people from uh, sports club, including... Um, People like uh, Neil Baum, who's at Richmond now as their yeah. sort of footy manager, studying in our postgrad programs and others as well, yeah. Uh, Chris, I'll go back to you. The VU block model, we're now in the third year. Tell us some of the positives of the VU block model within business. Yeah, um, I guess the hands-on experience is probably the best thing. Um, one, one point I definitely want to speak about is probably we don't cover enough, to be honest. So after I finished my degree, I, I studied in the traditional model. Um, so I didn't hear about the block model, obviously, until I came back to, to work for VU. Uh, my very first role was a recruitment consultant within HR, the HR function. Um, the way the block mode works is it works very well like in an agile form. So one thing it does very well, and I wish we kind of had that when I was studying, because it would have set me up quite well for my professional career, is we don't have 12 to 16 weeks to fill a job. I only have four weeks to fill a job. So. The, I guess the agile nature of the block mode prepares you quite considerably 
to work on demand and to work quite efficiently to get that job, get that job done in a, in a short amount of period of time. So that's why I feel the block mode really does come to fruition and does a really good job at preparing our, our students into being career ready in a sense. So that's definitely one aspect that I like to speak of, um, yeah, which I find is quite important. I'm sure Mike would probably agree to that too. So. Yes, yeah, you, you need to start, uh, start the, basically be ready to start yeah. as soon as possible and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and move quite quickly yeah, through it. Hit the, hit the ground running, that's for sure. And the block mode I think does a really good job at that. So yeah, definitely that. Heard some really positives about the block model. You've mentioned, Chris, that you studied beforehand in, I guess, a traditional method of yep. university teaching. Do you wish you had have had the VU block model or pros and cons to both there? Um, no, definitely block mode for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. Uh, like I was saying before, um, my, the, my career by nature is quite it's high demand, it's high energy. Um, again, I didn't have 12 to 16 weeks to, to fill a role. Um, it was then and there, had to sometimes fill a role within three, four days. So um, that high demand nature is definitely what the block mode is, appeals to me more, more so. Um, traditional mode was great, um, but at the same time, uh, like a funny kind of anecdote, anecdote that I tell um, some year 12 students is, you go to lecture theatres, you sit there for you know, two hours at a time and you're being spoken at, you're not, it's not interactive, you're not being engaged. Um, you know, by week six, we were just playing out in Nintendo DS in the back of the lecture theatre. So <laughs> this is when I was 17. Obviously, lots, a lot's changed since then. But um, I feel the block mode, you'll get a lot more out of it than you would in the tr traditional mode. So Yeah, it's yeah. a lot more intimate, isn't it? Even Definitely. with your classmates and also your <coughs> teacher. Uh, Michael, as a lecturer and teacher, how have you found the block model? And well, it's interesting, positive? those comments. The, the intimacy part's is spot on. Yeah. Um, it, now we've got a lot of students coming from VCE, coming into... Um, into a scenario which they're used to, and uh, it's probably easier to adapt. Uh, plus, I'm getting uh, a lot, yeah, a lot more out of my students. Plus, I get to also um, know them better. Uh, as mentioned, you'd go into a lecture theatre, lots of faces, and they were just faces in many cases because you might not have had them in a tutorial. But now. Uh, they belong to you all the time. And I say, you, be, you know, we belong together for that four <laughs> weeks and, um, and yeah, let's go. And uh, it works quite, it works really well from that point of view. Good to build up that camaraderie, you know, from the get go. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it does definitely help quite a bit. Yeah. And Samantha, as a student, yeah. uh, you're in your second year now. I am, yes. How have you found the block model? I actually really love the block yeah. model. So going back to that camaraderie, you get to know not only your teachers, you get to know them really well, especially if you have them in multiple blocks, but you get to know your fellow peers. So you might have the same rough group from the first block to the end of your degree and you get to know them. And then one day you might be colleagues and you've already got that bond formed that you get to know people and you get to know how to interact with them in a really professional way. But also you get to understand the, law, the joy of learning because you can ask teachers questions. It's not if you've got a question, you have to email them. You can ask them. You can put your hand up and be like, I don't get it. Can you go over it? And more often than not, someone else also thinks that. Do you find, because it is uh, such a smaller class, that you are more comfortable to go up and have a chat with the teacher? Yes. So I've gotten to know my teachers. I'm, if there was 300 people, I'm probably not likely to get up there and ask a question, but I'm more than... I can get advice for assignments I'm stuck on. I can ask questions relating to the topic, relating to the field. It's great, you really get to know people. Yeah, Michael, as a, the teacher, do you find that you're getting more students coming up to you and comfortable to ask these questions as opposed to emailing after a lecture with 300 students? Yeah, it, it, that's exactly right. What, what happens is that uh, when you walk into the class, you're not walking into a lecture room with you know, maybe 100 plus uh, students, you, you now got a smaller group, you walk in, um, as students come in, you, you, you chat with them. So yeah, relationships are formed, uh, better relationships are formed and probably closer as well. So yeah. A lot of positives from both sides of the spectrum, which is fantastic to yeah. see. Uh, we're gonna go across now to Emily Bodie, who is standing in one of our collaborative classrooms. She's joined by business academic, Tony Sahini. So over to you, Emily. 
Hey Bobby, thanks very much. I'm coming to you from Victoria University's Footscray Park campus where we're in one of our unique collaboration rooms. And often when students are thinking about what studying at university is going to be like, it conjures up images of sitting in a class with 200, 300 other people in a lecture theatre. But Tony, our collaboration space that we're in at the moment is totally different. Tell us a bit about the space that we're in. Uh, yes, it's very much different. Um, um, as you can see in this room, uh, students are actually able to, um, you know, uh, be closer to each other, uh, but also individually collaborate uh, with the students, but also with the teachers. So I would probably say it's more uh, personalised experience uh, and definitely students will uh, benefit and learn much better uh, from this experience. So I can see a lot of screens around the room at the moment. Tell us a little bit about the technology in these collaboration spaces. Yeah, uh, as you can see, uh, students can actually uh, wirelessly log on each screen and they can share individual work, uh, which can contribute better to their um, you know, final assignments. Uh, and uh, because um, this is a block mode, uh, students are able to actually uh, work much more efficient towards uh, producing uh, their assessments as well. Mm. So when we talk about the block model, we talk about collaboration and work workshop style learning. How important is the spaces that students learn in and contributing to that? Yeah, uh, very much because uh, this technology can uh, definitely contribute to uh, better outcomes for the students. Uh, especially because, um, as you can see, the setup is more personalised. It will definitely, definitely contribute to their successful um, achievements. And looking around, there's probably only about 20 seats in here. So I'm guessing the students get to know each other and their lecturers pretty well. Yes, and that's one of the advantages in Block Model, uh, where actually teachers and students spend m uh, much more time individually rather than, as you mentioned earlier, in the big lecture theatres. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Tony, for walking us through one of our collaboration spaces. It's back to you in the TV studio, Bobby. Thanks, Emily. Our industry partners play such a big role in our students' education, especially when we're talking about work placements as well for our students. VU's business placement unit is, of course, known as Work Integrated Learning. How do you think this has worked so far for the students, Michael? Well, I don't, I don't have a lot of direct experience with that, but I, I have seen students that have gone through it um, and uh, definitely uh, they're very well placed beyond that. Um, so one of the big advantages when, when, you, when students do uh, go into an industry beforehand is that um, they are better placed um, for future employment and, of course, being ready for what's to come as well. So. Uh, definitely a, a, a big advantage and I would encourage or strongly encourage a lot of students to, to sort of look at that as, a, as an opportunity. It's a really good foot in the door uh, across, the board, across the board, sorry, with all of the, co uh, the courses. Um, the opportunities that students are getting just with the work placements for future work and employment, which obviously happens a lot with the students here, which is great. And finally, we've got some questions that were submitted by some students uh, that are interested in studying business. So I'll pass these on to you guys. Uh, Samantha, we'll start with you. Uh, can you tell us about your class sizes studying in the block model and what it's like to not have to sit inside a large the lecture theatre? So our classes, the largest class size I've had is actually 30 people. So of course that is a lot smaller than your 100 plus lecture theatres. Because of this you're often in little groups that you can get along with quite well. You get to know almost everyone in the class to a great level. So you get to really form bonds and find out who the people you actually are studying with are. It's great to actually form those connections at it before you're in the field. Great, thank you, Samantha. Uh, I'll give this one to Skevo. Here we go. What if I don't get into the Bachelor of Business? What are my next steps? Yeah, that's okay. We've got plenty of pathway options for you. So depending on your results, um, there are some direct pathways like the Diploma of Business Enterprise, which is a one-year diploma, and that pathways into the second year of the Bachelor of Business anyway. So you're not essentially missing anything out because the diploma does cover off a lot of the same units and aspects that you would in the Bachelor's anyway. And also, again, depending on your requirements and what you did achieve, um, there are Certificate Fours uh, preparation programs that can pathway into the Bachelor as well. So don't stress, there's always a backup option, essentially. So yeah. Plenty of options out Plenty there. Plenty of options, yeah. Got another one for you. Uh, can I combine my business studies with another area, such as in a double degree? Yes, uh, we have plenty. So um, depending on what your interests are, you can do, uh, like myself, I did a 
business HR and psychology. Um, that seems to be like a quite a popular one. Another popular one is uh, business and laws. So a lot of our students typically do uptake that. So that's like a five year, 5.5 year program, I think. Um, so yeah, depending on your interests and which way you want to go into, you definitely can combine it with something else. So yeah. And Michael, I'll give this one to you. Can I combine my finance specialisation with another specialisation? Well, you can. Uh, it, it, there's always uh, tricks to everything, but uh, <laughs> definitely you can combine. And there was, uh, I've had law students doing finance as well. So there's the accounting that you can do with finance um, as, um, as well. But, uh, but you can combine fields, yes. Going. I'll finish with this and I'll ask each of you this one. This is just to the viewers out there, some of the students that are thinking about studying here at VU. What advice would you give them, Samantha? I would say go for it. I know that some people think just because we're not in the city, it can be a scarier place. You don't know it as well, but Footscray is a great area. The campus is amazing and the teachers and your peers are going to be the best mentors and companions you could have for your degree. Brilliant. Skevo, over to you. Yeah, so um, it can be a scary place. The block model does help in terms of transitioning from high school into university. Um, so that's a, a massive bonus. Um, but also for the Bachelor of Business, um, if you're not sure what you want to do, the best thing about it is the first year is a journalist degree. It's a journalist degree from in your first year, sorry. So there are eight units which cover a multitude of aspects like marketing, HR, accounting, finance, finance etc., and management. So if you're not entirely sure what you want to do, it doesn't matter. You can figure that out in your first year. Um, and then you know, choose that in your second year. So just jump in, you'll have a lot of fun regardless. And then yeah, you can, you can go from there, so. Give it a go. Yeah. And Michael, we'll finish with you. What's some of the advice that you'd give to people out there that are watching and thinking of studying business here at VU? Yeah, well, if you want to continue on in a, in a, on a path that you've already taken um, in terms of classroom experience, um, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, it is more personalized um, in terms of your education. Um, a lot more attention, I can guarantee, from, uh, from your teachers and, uh, and a, a great way to study. Well, thank you very much to each and every one of you for coming here today and talking all things Victoria University Business School. We hope that you viewers out there have got a good insight into the VU Business School. And if you are studying here in the future, we wish you all the best for this.